You ready? Okay, yeah. Okay, we'll have uh, Coach Anderson make an opening comment on fall camp starting tomorrow, then you guys can go ahead and ask questions. Okay, well, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, media days, good day for our kids. Uh, excited to get back to camp and get a little uh, walkthrough stuff today and get started tomorrow morning with uh, officially kick off of camp after a few meetings. Um, have a nice dinner tonight. We're excited to be back. Kids are excited. You know, a lot of them had a week off. Uh, if they didn't have summer school still, so yeah, a little unique. The first week of camp, we're still in summer school uh, for a number of kids, so we'll practice in the afternoon on the grass and uh, – and we'll go through that until summer school's over, and then we'll transfer back from uh, sometimes in the stadium, sometimes on the grass as we go. But it's just it's good to get the kids back. We're pretty healthy right now. I uh, feel like we're in a good spot. The key is to uh, you know continue to learn, stay healthy, work extremely hard, and, and build this team uh, on and off the field as we go through camp. So that's where we sit, and I'll take your questions. Gary, you've obviously been asked similar questions this before, but I mean, how, how different is the atmosphere? The environment here at Utah State than it was for your first fall camp back in 2009? Well, uh, 2009, that was a lot of rodeos ago. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's markedly different for myself, for the staff. Um, you know, if you just look at our staff, we'll talk about the kids in just a second about that, which is the most important part of it. But this is an experienced staff, so they understand, you know, college football has changed dramatically with camps since then also. Uh, there's no more two-a-days which I believe is a positive thing. And, you know, I think structurally we're in a much better place to take care, to take care of our kids uh, from a nutritional standpoint, uh, from a training room standpoint. Uh, and when I say that, I mean just the people, the facilities, the number of people. Uh, same thing within the weight room. So all those areas, uh, there's been you know, huge upgrades in a positive way. And, again, I don't say that from, you know, I love Dale. Dale knows that. So I'm not saying that. I'm just saying from a standpoint of, the Mountain West has really helped us progress um, as an athletic department as a whole, uh, which puts the kids in a good spot. So that's a good thing. Um, you know, this is a, a team that's expected to come in and play well. Um, they expect that. They understand their deficiencies. And they expect that they've made strides on those deficiencies. We've gone through uh, summer. And we've gone through winter. And we've gone through spring ball. So we'll see how uh, we've done in those areas as we, as we go through camp. I would say one thing that's different about this camp, especially from the past, is this will be an extremely competitive camp. Um, there's a lot of a lot of kids on this football team that uh, want to st uh, strap that starter tag next to their name and uh, excited to compete. So that'll be fun to watch. Um, it'll be great to get the D lineman back, obviously, in spring ball. The big difference there is we have bodies now, which we had so many kids be recovering from nagging injuries or surgery or what have you, we'll get all those guys back because I expect that to be a, a true powerful part of this football team. So, um, And then just overall, it's uh, Utah State has made tremendous strides since our first year here, uh, you know, way back when. And there's so many positive things for these kids. And like I say, and I'm going to continue saying that this is, uh, we don't have Power 5 next to our name, next to our conference tag, but this is a Power 5 football program as far as the way these student athletes are treated. And that's highly important to me. Let me ask you, from your perspective now, your thoughts on being in the Mountain West as a coach compared to the WAC. Is this a big upgrade, or do you think the conference is better? Well, I just look at that last year. You know, you look at San Jose, La Tech, you look at us. I mean, there was some, those were all ranked teams, and I think all had double-digit wins, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so there were some tremendous teams back then. There's some tremendous teams now uh, within the, the Mountain West Conference. So I look at the, you know, probably from, Top to bottom, I would say the Mountain West is, is more competitive, especially where we our schedule is this year. Uh, you're playing against some tremendous football teams, obviously the two teams that played in the championship last year. You look at the games last year with Colorado State, you look at the game with Wyoming, you look at the game with Air Force, and we're, we're in for some extreme battles. Um, you throw San Diego State in the mix on that, who is always a very, you know, they're very, very tough-minded football team with Coach Long, uh, you know, steering the ship in that situation there. So, uh, from top to bottom, I would say that the Mountain West is, is a tougher conference, uh, but the top of the top is uh, probably much the same as it was when we were in the WAC. Any news on uh, last-minute additions or walk-ons that got scholarships recently this summer? Or No, not really. Um, you know, we, uh, we've, we've kind of flip-flopped that a little bit. We'll make those. We'll have some walk-on announcements as we come through time. We're not going to make it be a big 
song and dance as we go through it, but I think those kids will need to be, uh, I want the team to know first as we go through that process. Um, we'll let you guys know when we get to that spot, but I want to make sure the team knows that first. Um, as far as late additions, we really had just about a half a dozen newcomers that are here today for the first time. Um, they'll be on the roster, and you know our total number of kids in the program, as you know, is, is a large number of new kids in the program, but almost all of them are here for the summer. Um, but you know, five or six new guys uh, were in there today. Besides the late additions, you've had some late subtractions. Mm -hmm. uh, some, some of the guys that maybe you were thinking would be here, but there aren't. You can talk a little bit about some of those guys that you were hoping you could have on your roster, but they're not here now. Well, the biggest thing for me there is we're just going to talk about the guys we have. Um, you know, our education process with the young men, if they decide to be here or not want to be here, it's important to me that, you know, this is your school. And if you decide that it's not your school in that situation, then you make that decision. We always educate. We communicate. Uh, we don't shut a kid out of communication when we get in those situations and we have discussions. But uh, the fact that uh, you know, we're excited about the young men we have here, and I know the young men that are in that room right now, going through their team meeting and are excited to be part of it and they're not worried about the guys that uh, aren't in that room with them. Can you talk about, uh, as you studied Jordan Love, uh, watching film and things, did, did your change, did your feeling change about him much? And then you worked with him in the spring and you saw what was going on. What can you t tell us about him? Your thoughts? <laughs> well, uh, from afar at the beginning was obviously really just watching TV um, and, and watching him play. And, um, but uh, as you get to be around Jordan, say it time and time again he is just such a, a tremendous young man and such a, a great captain and a great leader um, and it's it's always it's always very even with him he's, he's consistent when he leaves the building he's consistent throughout every day of the week um, doesn't seem to be phased but his drive you know, from a football standpoint his drive to really get better is uh, is very noticeable you know he's he wants to learn um, he's been with some great coaches He's with some great coaches now, and I think his relationship with Coach Sanford is special and will continue to grow and develop, and we need to make sure we continue to grow and develop the offense around him as a whole and get the best players on the field. Um, and uh, you know, we owe that to him. And his football team knows that you know, he is a captain, he is our leader, uh, he's our leader on the offensive side of the ball. But he's just been uh, – I've never seen him you know, really have a bad day, and we've talked about the future. Uh, it's one thing we have not hidden. From with Jordan is we talked about let's get to January and then see what happens and let's play great and get you in a position to be able to make a decision. Um, and I think that's something that we needed to talk about. And this kid every day gets hit by agents. He gets beat up by a bunch of people as far as that stuff goes. And I don't agree with it, but I can't stop it. Um, so we needed to discuss it, and we did. And he's very level-headed, and I believe he'll handle that um, like a student, athlete, professional, which is exactly what that young man every day to be great and uh, he will uh, give you all he's got to Aggie Nation. Can I ask you as, as a person, mm -hmm. does he compare to Chucky? How, when you put had Chucky? Um, different types of leadership, uh, but, but both very good leaders. So when I say that, you know, Chucky was very excitable, um, you know, might do a backflip at any moment if he completed a five yard hitch. You know, I mean, it did, it, it, Chucky was uh, very emotional that way, which is, much more like me. <laughs> so, you know, he is an excitable guy. And uh, and Jordan is, is much more just, you know, stays even. Now, don't trust me. He gets excited and he loves to make the plays and do the things that he does. But he's just, uh, he's not as, uh, he lives with his own personality, which is fantastic. And I don't want that to change in any way, shape, or form. And uh, But as far as a, a leader on the team and uh, someone that the, the team looks up to, you know, very much in the same, they know that uh, the power quarterback, which we all know, but we also know the power of a quality quarterback that's a true leader, which is very special to have. Can you talk about Coach Rivero joining the staff now? Obviously, his coaching resume in high school, Logan, speaks for itself. What did you see in him that made you feel confident to bring him on as an offensive analysis? Well, I've spent, you know, my kids played for Coach Fab, obviously, at Logan High. Um, had great respect for his teams, had great respect for the way so many of the young men that we recruited over the years from Cash Valley as a whole, played at Logan. And uh, they came in here, and they were really prepared for a college experience. You know, they had been in a system that uh, was demanding, that uh, the kids were asked to do a lot. Um, and that really caught my attention. Um, and then as I got to know Fab, and he went through time and he retired, you know, 
can only play golf so many days a week, right? You got to have something to do. <laughs> His wife called me and said, please kick him out of the house, please. Um, but in all honesty, he's just, he's a tremendous football knowledge. Uh, he doesn't have an ego. He's not coming here with any, any vision other than he's being an analyst and, you know, help coach Sanford and the offensive staff out. He has a great mind. And when you have a great mind that you can add to your staff, uh, that I know will make us better. It's just a huge, huge uh, plus for us as a whole um, as a football staff, a football team. And, you know, we're all lucky to have him now. He's very limited as far as, you know, coaching. He can't coach, um, and he, but, he, but he can put us in a position to stay ahead of opponents could put us in a position to complete, uh, understand our opponents even more with working with the staff. So it'll be a, a big positive for us. Coach, um, <clears throat> with George Love and Gerald Bright and a couple of the others, a couple other mainstays from last year's team, obviously on this roster this year, how much does that, does having guys like that kind of jumpstart chemistry and, and kind of continuity at the start? Well, it's big. You know, you will start that tonight with some of those young men being able to address the camp, um, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the whole team during camp at different times. And we had a leadership retreat um, a couple weeks ago now, and it was a tremendous opportunity for our captains and our leadership committee to kind of get together and, and set team goals. Um, they were able to spend some time with Doc Gordon, which is uh, invaluable for us as a football team and the kids of understand they, they they need to set their goals it's not our goals as coaches it's not strength room goals it's not training room goals it's not video guys goals it's not it's the, the football team's goals and it's the job of the leadership committee and the captains to you know hold the team accountable to that as well as ours but it's extremely important when a team is is held accountable by its leaders it's very powerful and you know um, Bryce's been great at that uh, Jordan's been great at that and captains are good. Woody is a tremendous leader in his own way. You know, Everly is um, a tremendous leader to his special teams you know, in his own way. Uh, so it's, it's, it's great to see those guys you know, continue to grow and develop. And Tipa has done a great job as another captain growing and developing into being a team leader uh, when he leaves this facility. He's always been very good when he's been in, in the facility, in the weight room, around his team. But when he leaves the facility, he's become a much better leader, which is expected out of which, uh, I guess, positional battles are you really looking forward to personally unfolding this camp? Well, the ones we've been talking about for a long time. The offensive line is huge. Uh, you know, those, I say it again, uh, we walked in here in January, evaluated this group very closely and looked at the offensive line and felt like that uh, there were some young men that could replace those four starters and put us in a place to win football games. So we put all our chips in in January in that situation. And they've worked hard. Um, they've worked hard. They've gained weight. They've battled proud of them on the field, off the field, in the classroom. Um, so we're going to see exactly how far they've come as we continue to go when we get our offense or excuse me, our defensive lineman back. So you're going to see where they're at because I believe our defensive line will be very good and I expect them to be. Um, so the offensive line will be challenged and uh, we'll see where they sit and in the wide receiver position. That is, that is key for uh, this football team and that is key for Jordan. It's key for the offense to be able to function at a high level and when you lose 75 plus percent of your production at the wide receiver position, it needs to, uh, you know, obviously step up and go. We've added numbers there, um, we've added new faces there, and that will be extremely competitive for those spots also. And we have some very good players in this program that have had some great off seasons and some great summers that, you know, are expected to come in and play at a high level by themselves and by us. So uh, I believe we're going to be good there, but uh, you know, what we believe right now, we got to see. Those are really two on the offensive side of the ball. On defense, it's, you know, Woody is in a great position, a tremendous player, and uh, who's going to be next to him? You know, is it going to be Kevin? Is it going to be Noah? Is Cash going to come down there and play some? You know, who's going to come in that spot at the other linebacker side and, and be that guy next to Woody or the couple guys that are next to Woody that can really, you know, help us play a high level of defense? And then as a whole, in the defensive backfield, there's – a lot of competition, you know, at safety, yes, at nickel, yes, at corner, yes. Um, and there's going to be a little bit of moving of the chess pieces there to see where those young men fit. And those kids are all ready to compete. Um, you know, I, I uh, went out to lunch today with Grayson, and he's extremely excited. And he just you know, shared with me how fired up that, that back end is ready to jump out and go play football. And, 
and get involved in the, in the defense. And, 